Who do you look at around the league as you're studying and say, we're going to have to run through them? Celtics. No one in the West. Nah, I'm fine in the West. Rand staring down Reeves. Job blocked by Davis. Oh, he caught it and took his cornbread. What a play. James the trailer. Got it. Maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess what, what were you thinking? I don't care. He's old. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, I was waiting for that. I was expecting him to do that game four, game five. He wanted to say something when I got my fourth foul. Um, he should have been saying that earlier on. Um, but, you know, I poke bears. Um, I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. The storm of the emotion, the energy, and the crowd. Look at AD! Get it out of here! Well, AD is like Jaron Jackson, especially when he's only off the ball, defensive positioning, patrolling that paint. Blocks the shot by Dylan Brooks and sends it into the stands. Juan to James, he gets him. James drives. James is fouled! And one! LeBron! Trash talking, overconfidence, cockiness, it's all part of the game. It's actually what makes the NBA so entertaining. The drama of it all. A year-round male reality TV show that we just can't seem to get enough of. And without the trash talking, it wouldn't rile us up and make it as fun for us fans. But then, there are times where the banter and overconfidence takes a new meeting where a team or player just lacks basic self-awareness so much so that it puts a target on their back for the rest of the league where they want nothing more than to beat you. That little extra motivation and drive to play harder, in the words of Michael Jordan, taking it personally. Well, for a young up-and-coming team that has been seeing a lot of success in the early part of their careers, that success has gotten to their heads to where they felt they were invincible. That team being the Memphis Grizzlies, a team that after all season was boasting about how they weren't afraid of anybody, dancing around the tunnel with their weird little rituals before games, getting in fights with players around the league, well, that all caught up to them, as the Grizzlies, who despite finishing second in the Western Conference yet again, were humbled by the LA Lakers in the first round of the playoffs, who won that series in six games and winning in convincing fashion on their own home court, absolutely embarrassing the Grizzlies, winning by 40 points. This is when trash talking goes wrong in the worst way possible. If you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss a video. And in return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Now, make no mistake, the Memphis Grizzlies, despite getting beat down in the first round as the second seed, are still a very good team, a very fun and talented team, arguably one of the most exciting teams to watch in basketball right now. With their high octane offense, explosive pace, and ability to turn defense into offense, getting up and down the court. Purely from a basketball perspective, for those who enjoy watching the game, you have to love watching this team. One of the best defenses in the NBA with the high effort and tenacity and pestering their opponents to then the highlight real explosiveness of a player like Ja Morant who can go off in a hurry and take over a game. I've seen Ja live twice playing against my Chicago Bulls. He's absolutely incredible in how crafty he is at getting to the basket. It's not often you see a player like him come into the NBA. But as fun as it is to watch this team play the game of basketball, the way they carry themselves and the cockiness for which they exude with having Having won nothing to back up that overconfidence is what makes this team annoying and part of the reason why they've become one of the most hated teams in the NBA. It's one thing to trash talk and win. It's another thing when you constantly talk smack and can't back up that talk time and time again. Last season, the Memphis Grizzlies were finally starting to break out after having gone to the playoffs by way of the play-in the prior year. They instantly become a title contender with John Morant on his way to superstardom and guys like Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, and Jaron Jackson Jr. having all breakout seasons. They finished second in the West and were one of the title favorites in the league. They won their first round series against the Timberwolves, although that series was by no means a cakewalk, even though the Grizzlies sure celebrated like it was, dancing on the Wolves logo while walking off the court in Game 6, or Job posting a picture of a Grizzly running after a wolf on Instagram after the defeat. 
confidence was at an all-time high until they met the Golden State Warriors in the second round and got taken out in six games. Ja Morant did go down with an injury early in that series, but even with Ja, that team was by far no matchup for the eventual champion, Golden State Warriors. But even despite a somewhat disappointing ending to their season, the Grizzlies remained just as cocky, just as talkative, where you heard from Ja in an interview on ESPN talking about how he was fine in the West, wasn't worried about any team that he had to go through in the West. Just that Boston was the only team he was worried about or that they had to look at, which no offense to Boston, a great team. They were in the finals last season, but there are plenty of other teams in the West I would be more concerned about than a team like the Celtics if I'm the Memphis Grizzlies. To then Dylan Brooks trying so hard to become this villain in the NBA for his own publicity, trying to start fights with every player in the league, even getting into fights with fans sitting courtside like Shannon Sharp, calling LeBron old and that he doesn't respect a player until they put 40 on them, which the Lakers then proceed to eliminate the Grizzlies in a 40-point win drubbing of their team. Don't get me wrong, Dylan Brooks has some great sound bites and comments that he's made to the media to provide some great comedy, but then he also goes running and doesn't speak to the media when his team loses badly as they did in the playoffs against the Lakers. And after all of that talking, all the showboating, dancing around, the Grizzlies yet again have nothing to show for it but two playoff wins getting bounced in the first round to the seven-seeded LA Lakers. Now in their defense, the Lakers are a better team than their record would otherwise indicate after making some quality moves at the NBA trade deadline. And keep in mind, the Grizzlies were also a little banged up as well, John Morant being out in game two, even though the Grizzlies won that game. Obviously, Steven Adams was out the whole series. So yes, I'm sure some Grizzlies fans will come in here and defend that to the death. But for the most part, the Grizzlies were healthy. And to be honest, it wasn't like this series was super close with the Lakers having won most of their games in convincing fashion, especially in Game 6 when the Grizzlies were never really in the game whatsoever. And when we see a team like the Grizzlies continue to underperform in the playoffs relative to what we have seen from them in the regular season and relative to how they carry themselves as a team, it gets to the point that no matter how fun and exciting this team is, it makes you not really want to root for them at all with all their on-court and off-court antics. A team that, as of right now, cannot be taken seriously. A lot of question marks for the Grizzlies going into this offseason. They don't have a ton of cap space as Jaws' new contract extension goes into effect, starting at $33.5 million. Most of their roster, with the exception of Dylan Brooks, are all under contract for next season. And for Brooks, you're going to have to pay him a sizable contract as he's a big piece of what they do on offense as well as his defensive tenacity. You're also going to need to think about extending Desmond Bain, who is extension eligible this offseason. You need to be able to lock him up as he's quickly becoming the Grizzlies' second scoring option. But at the same time, can the Grizzlies really run it back yet again? After the massive culture issues that they've had this season, their inability to execute in the postseason, and while they're a young team with still a lot of upside potential, not a single player on their roster is in their 30s, it would benefit them to have a strong veteran leader, a voice and presence in the locker room that can keep these guys focused and whip them into shape when they're acting out of line. They don't have that right now. And it's desperately needed on a team that has so much potential but is missing that critical culture piece and veteran leader that you need to see to be a true contender in the NBA. What that missing piece looks like? I don't know. But either way, change needs to happen starting at the top of the organization. Otherwise, we're just going to keep seeing the same thing over and over from this Grizzlies team. Tone down the trash talk and start putting your money where your mouth is. Let me know what you guys think though. As always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.